Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another edition of Astros Recap. David Artis here once again, Sunday night. It's at 10.25, so a little earlier than usual. Usually I'll take you uh, well into the 11 o'clock hour. It's April 18th, um, but another Sunday, another week in the books for the Astros. So they've now played 15 games this year. Um, they're 7-8, and eight, so not great a uh, very t a rough week uh, to talk about here but this is a way to get through it uh, getting through talking about it helps me get through things so um uh, a lot of things I can talk about today so buckle up I'm, this might be a, a longer podcast uh, this week uh, obviously last week's was a little short I didn't even make it to 30 minutes so this one might be a little longer. But there is a lot to talk about, a lot to get through. I'm going to try to uh, go easy here on Dusty Baker. Made some questionable decisions we'll talk about. Um, but, you know, towards the end of my last podcast, I mentioned, you know, a 4-2 and two looking at the schedule. Detroit, Seattle, not tough teams, 4-2, and two, but also leaning towards maybe 5-1. and one. If that's a little greedy, I guess you could say so. But, um, yeah, it was tough, you know, obviously. Going two and three last week, losing to the Angels and then two times to the Oakland A's and then losing five of six, getting swept by Detroit and uh, losing two of three in Seattle, place where we usually do some damage. So uh, the Astros have some major issues, obviously. Uh, they came out, you know, with the off day. Well, actually, they came out on Monday. They didn't play good. I I'm going to talk about sort of the uh, coronavirus. The protocol, the 10-day IL stint, I guess, that five of our players are on. But Monday, Tuesday, that wasn't really the case. They just came out and didn't do anything really well. Starting pitching was terrible, by the way, as Granke actually got the start there on, was it Monday? Yeah. And Granke wasn't good. Granke's a guy that's our ace, basically. So I don't need him to be like Justin Verlander-like, but I need him to be a guy that gives us innings, gets outs, and keeps us quality starts really is what I'm looking for. But he's got the opportunity, really hasn't lived up to expectations I think that we would have hoped of, uh, hoped for when we actually acquired him. I mean, I think he pitched fairly well back in, you know, 19. Uh, pitched game seven of the World Series, and we were winning that game until A.J. took him out, which, again, uh, you can go back and forth. On the decision there, I did not blame A.J. for taking Granky out when he did, but uh, the consensus, I think, in Houston, and a lot of people felt like he should have kept him in, which is obviously easy to say in hindsight. I'm not going to go too far into that back in 1920. Obviously, sort of a lost 60-game year. Granky was sort of up and down. I think he had a good two, three, four-star stretch, but other than that, I think his ERA was like in the four, so he wasn't very good last year. And obviously without Verlander uh, this year, uh, he's got the guy, he's got the pedigree, he's got the experience, so he's sort of the number one guy. So it's important for Granke to pitch like it. Now he's not the guy he used to be, obviously. He can't, you know, rush his fastball in the mid to upper 90s. He can't, you know, he doesn't have uh, the stuff he used to, but he's still good enough, smart enough. And, you know, he's got to, you know, hit the corners, get the calls, and, you know, he's, he's a very smart guy. He knows what he what he's doing out there. Uh, so he's got to find a way to, you know, get through. I mean, out of all five of our starters, he's been the one guy that's actually been able to give us, you know, more than five innings of work or get through five innings for, for, for that sake. But uh, Granke didn't pitch well here. So he had one good start, one pretty good start, and then one pretty bad start as he only went four and two-thirds in this game. Used the slider a lot, um, but did at four and two thirds, ten hits, six runs all earned, uh, walked three, struck out two, allowed three home runs. Now, luckily, we talk about the bullpen and we talk about these people being taxed because our starters can't go deep enough. Luis Garcia came in, obviously going into the season he was our fifth starter, but with all the off days, they've been able to shorten the rotation to four guys. Garcia comes in and he pitches the last four and a third innings with only two hits. 
Uh, no runs, struck out seven, walked a batter, so he really saved um, everybody else in that bullpen, uh, which was good. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's so funny with the Astros because they, they start the season so well. Uh, the pitching wasn't spectacular, but it was good enough. I mean, the, the offense was scoring eight to nine run, eight to nine run, run runs a game. So it was like, you know, if our pitching did good enough in the sense that, you know, you just kept it at three, four runs, we were going to be fine. And it looked like we were just off to this incredible start. Our offense was doing great. Our pitching was just fine. And then it, it, it's so funny how baseball can quickly turn. You can look like one of the best teams in baseball and look like you're unstoppable and you can't be beaten. And then three days later, baseball is a game that will humble you, humble you very quickly. Uh, something I've learned over the years. Um, but yeah, Greinke wasn't good. Like I said, gave up six six earned runs. You know, we were down six to nothing. Scored two meaningless uh, runs in the eighth and ninth inning, but we lost that six to two. Casey Mize, uh, who was a former number one overall pick, I guess for Detroit, uh, has a chance this year to really show what he's made of. Um, So obviously with the whole Detroit series and A.J. Hinch returning to town, that whole thing was just completely overblown. I think people need to get over A.J. Hinch. I mean, listen, I spent a lot of time on Twitter during the baseball season. That's like my only social media account is Twitter. At David Artis 7 by the way, D-A-V-I-D-A-R-T-I-S-7, if you'd like to give me a follow. But I am so sick and tired. Like, can't we just call the time? Like, I couldn't find a tweet where somebody would say the Tigers or the Detroit Tigers without mentioning A.J. Hinch's name. People act like A.J. Hinch was the best manager in baseball. And I'm just going to say this one last time. A.J. Hinch, listen, <laughs> you put any average manager on the Astros, A.J. was there from 15 through 19, five years. You put any average manager in his spot, they do just as good as A.J. Hinch. That team was loaded, especially 17, 18, 19. Now, they sort of overachieved in 15, but they had, like, a, a baseball manager is basically just a guy. I mean, it depends on the talent you have, okay? And that's all on the GM and owner, mostly the GM. I'm not going to give the owner. The owner's got the money. The GM makes those moves. Jeff Luno's a genius, okay? And I've said this before, I'll say it again. Jim Crane's going to regret firing Jeff Luno more than anything else. Because I think years, we'll see. Obviously, I'll have hope. But I had faith in Jeff Luno no matter how late we drafted, where we were in the draft. Later rounds, he and his scouts had an unbelievable eye for finding people uh, that turn into big acquisitions late in drafts. So even with us losing, you know, 20, first round, first and second round picks in 2020, 2021, um, I still, if, if Jeff Luna was here, I'd, I'd still expect him to, to, to find value later in the drafts. And, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try to sit here and ju judge James Click, James Click until I see moves and acquisitions and our prospects. And obviously our farm system is terrible. I'm, I'm getting way off topic, so just to come back in, but this whole Detroit series – they swept us, okay? They, they, they beat us up pretty good. <laughs> There's no sugarcoating that. But to act like A.J. Hinch, all these, it, it's just too much for me. I, I can't, I can't. A.J. Hinch is an average manager, okay? Most of the managers in baseball are average, okay? If you have a team that's loaded with talent, it's hard not to win. And he got way too much credit. In fact, I think he lost more games to the, for the Astros than he won with his questionable bullpen dec uh, management decisions. Uh, he'd have no guys go more than two days in a row, which I think is sort of babying some of the relievers. He had an issue, well, not an issue, but he had way too long a leash on some guys. Hector Rondon comes to mind. Uh, but to con con continually roll these guys out there that was clear in everybody's eyes that they couldn't get it done, for him to continue to roll with these guys just, he, he played the bullpen. He managed more to be fair than he did to win, which I think is ridiculous. Um, 
But yeah, the whole thing with they, the, 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 these Astros fans out there, Astros Twitter, these people that have been watching the Astros since about 2015 or 16, 17 when they finally got good, and A.J. Hinch is the only manager they know. And that's not everybody. I'm not going to say, but there, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, think A.J. Hinch is like the best manager in the world. He's not, okay? And Detroit's going to lose around 90 games this year, okay? I'll just say that right now. Um, but yeah, Twitter just really pissed me off in this three-game series because even after the first game, I was already fed up. And I was like, we got two more games with these guys, and this is going to be crazy. But I'm going to get off A.J. Hinch for a minute. Uh, Detroit, yeah, they beat us. So we talked about Granke, six six runs, didn't get through five. He was terrible. Um, Oda Rizzi gets his first start, obviously. He wasn't very good. Allowed a few, you know, home runs in the first, you know, rows of the Crawford boxes. Akil Badu killed them the entire series, it felt like. Uh, but Oda, Rizzi's, Oda Rizzi's box score won't look good. Uh, only three and a third, seven hits, five earned runs. Uh, didn't walk anybody, struck out four, but gave up three home runs, so he wasn't good. Abreu comes in, a guy that I sort of have to <laughs> be okay with because there's really nobody else in that bullpen, but he wasn't good. Two earned runs in his inning at two-thirds, struck out four, walked two hitters, gave up a home run himself. Blake Taylor came in, actually had a clean inning. We'll talk about Blake Taylor more here in a little bit. And then Nivaldo Rodriguez who I forget is actually in the bullpen, but they just brought him up. Nivaldo Rodriguez actually got three innings in. He gave him he, he gave up an earned run, but at least ate up the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings for the Astros to save what's left of their pretty terrible bullpen anyway to begin with. So they lose that, obviously. Uh, after Tuesday's game, obviously I was working Wednesday. We were out um, down Hall of Fame home run alley watching batting practice in the line. I didn't even realize, but nobody was really out there taking batting practice. Wasn't a lot of people on the field. Sort of had a weird feel, but I didn't really say or think of it too much, to be honest with you. Then the lineup comes out, and yeah, it's, it's a completely different lineup that's got nobody. Uh, you know, The first few guys was like, all right, Miles Straw's leading off. Alumnus Diaz is batting second. Michael Brantley's hitting third. And I was like, what? My first, my first impression was, wow, I was like, Dusty's really trying to switch things up. Obviously, four-game losing streak. I actually didn't have a problem with it, but you keep looking at the lineup, and then you get all these no-name guys, Taylor Jones, um, Ronnie Dawson, um, Abraham Toro. It's like, these guys aren't even on the right. Who, who are these guys? And then I go over to Twitter, and sure enough, you know, Chandler Rome and Ryan McTaggart and Jake Kaplan, all of them, uh, talking about our five guys going to the um, the IL, and those those five guys, obviously your three big hitters: Jordan Alvarez, Alex Bregman, Jose Altuve, also Martin Maldonado, and uh, what's his Ru- Ruby Garcia or something like that. So all those guys, sort of in the safety protocol. Someone either, someone had the virus, or they were in contact with somebody who had the virus. Uh, we don't know the story. They're always secretive with this whole virus thing. They won't tell you who's got it, and they, they, they just don't give you a whole lot of information. Uh, but that's all we can take with it. So, so after you know you're on a four-game losing streak, right? And now you're 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 losing three of your your top hitters in the lineup, uh, not looking good. <laughs> So I had no faith on Wednesday that they win. Sure enough, they did. They had their chances. They only lost six to four, but they gave up six early runs. As Lance McCullers, who goes out there, I, I I've almost I, I'm at a point with Lance McCullers where we know we, we know what 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 he is. I'm I'm done with Lance in terms of thinking he can be a top of the line starter. I, they just gave him what, five years, eighty five million dollars, but I'm done thinking Lance is. I think he is who he is. He's a guy who can't really pitch on the road. Um, we'll see. I mean, he's had good road starts, but overall, you just look at the careers, road numbers are pretty terrible. So uh, you you can trust him at home. But again, he's a guy who's just going to run his pitch count up because he has trouble. He has swing and miss stuff, but he also has trouble with command, finding the strike zone for, at times. So 
He's a guy that you're lucky to get five, six innings out of because that pitch count, it, it, it's like this every year. Come on. When did he, was he, he was here in 20, what, 15, I think, was his first year? So he's been here, that was his sixth, his seventh year. He hasn't pitched a full season. He hasn't been healthy for a full season. So the health is a big concern. His road numbers are a huge concern. And he can't he can't pitch into the sixth, seventh inning in most games because his pitch count runs up. So he's and obviously uh, Dusty said after the game, you know, he's dealing with his his COVID shot. He got the Johnson Johnson vaccine, and you know, he was weak and he was sick. And I, I'm not I'm not making excuses for him. Prove me wrong is what I'll say to Lance because prove to me that you can stay healthy. A that you can pitch on the road. B and that you can actually go deeper into games. He's got three issues that I have with Lance McCullers. So, but I've, I've I've come to the conclusion that this is who he is. We've given him tons of opportunities to prove that he can be a you know legit ace or number two, but I don't see it. I don't, and I'm 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 done believing. Uh, I know it's early in the season, but. I just remember watching this game and feeling like, all right, I, I give up. This is who he is. Let's just accept it and let's move on. Prove me wrong, Lance, is what I'll say to you. Prove me wrong, wrong please. Please prove me lo- uh, wrong. I'd love to be wrong on this, but uh, this is this is who Lance McCullers is going to be. So uh, They had their chances. They, they, they made a comeback. Uh, Kyle Tucker is another guy I'll rip this uh, for this week because he had three chances. Bases loaded, one out. Bases loaded, nobody out. He had chances to really show. I think he was hitting in like the two hole. I'm not sure. He might have been hitting fourth, fifth. I don't know where he is in the lineup. But I, he had three opportunities. If he could just put the ball in the outfield, medium to deep, where he could drive in runs. And he popped up to the shortstop twice and struck out. Uh, three different occasions were. This was a winnable game for the Astros. As bad as the lineup looked, Lance not pitching well, this was a winnable game. Um, but, um, yeah, I'll blame Lance. I'm not going to buy – I mean, he might have been sick, but if he's if he's healthy enough to go out there and start the game, then I'm not going to use the excuse, well, he was sick, so, you know, I'm not going to buy into that. If you're good enough to go out there and play, then you better be good enough to get outs and pitch well. So that that's the way I look at that. But Kyle Tucker, you 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 were terrible. You you really sucked uh, in this opportunity here, and he sucked this weekend too. So Kyle Tucker obviously was like the Astros' best hitter last year, two month span obviously until the playoffs started. Uh, but he showed us things uh, I've talked about in previous podcasts. His swing is way too long. It's got a huge loop in it. Super uppercut. Um, he got off to a pretty good start this year. He hit three home runs in the first two series or whatever it was. Um, but uh, Kyle Tucker is really struggling right now. And, and this is when that swing just... I, <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, it's a tough one to, to... Yeah, he was terrible and he was terrible this, this, this weekend. So Kyle Tucker, you're on my my uh, you're on my list right now. I'll just say that, but I wrote it in pencil. I have a list of players that really bother me, and he is on that list. And there'll be a few other guys I'll I'll throw on that list here uh, when I talk more about it. So um. But yeah, the other chances, and that's a tough one to lose. So you get swept by AJ Hinch. That's that's what that's what you'd see on Twitter. AJ had swept him, uh, swept him this uh, th- this week. It's the Tigers. The Tigers swept him. Um, uh, that's who swept him. Not AJ Hinch had nothing to do with the sweep there. Okay, I'll just say that. Now there was, you know, I listened to the Crawford talks or you know uh, a podcast that I've listened to with uh, Chris Gordy and Michael Connor, uh, Sports Talk Seven Ninety, of course. Um, they talked about AJ Hinch knowing our hitters well. I will say that, okay? Uh, he knows our hitters well. He knows what they, uh, their sort of approach. So he might have had some more inside information to give his starting pitchers that other teams wouldn't have. So I will say that. But again, I'm not going to sit here and act like A.J. Hinch and 
you know, they gave him a tribute video on Monday, and obviously the, they, you know, the, the crowd that was there gave him a standing ovation. Uh, that should have been the end of it, but I just felt like, well, if we had beaten Detroit, I think it would have been a different story. But all these people act like A.J. Hanch and Dusty Baker sucks, and and it's the whole the whole thing just was sort of it was blown way out of proportion in my eyes. Get over it. AJ Hinch isn't here. He's never coming back. Just get over it, okay? So yeah, that series bothered me. And then obviously, like I said, yeah, lo- they're getting swept by Detroit. Obviously, uh, all these Astros Twitter and all these people that have been fans for a few years um, act like AJ Hinch losing him is the reason. Uh, I'm not yeah. Get the day off Thursday, which uh, obviously I hate to go into a day off uh, after a loss. I mean, they lost what, five in a row at this point, so hated doing that. But they needed a day off, but didn't really do them much good. I mean, your lineup is is crap right now uh, without three of your top hitters. And Carlos Correa, dude, you are not worth $300 million because you <laughs> – I, I want to talk about all this sort of at the end. <laughs> but as I think of things, you know, Kyle Tucker, Carlos Correa, yeah, you, you, you uh, I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, Seattle, Friday, uh, this was a tough one because you, you, you get three runs there in the fifth inning to take a three nothing, uh, three nothing lead, and then here comes your bullpen where there's too many question marks, too many people you can't rely on. Uh, not only do they give up, so they give up two runs, right? They give up two runs. Who gave up the, those two runs? Let's see here. Urquidy gave up two runs to make it 3-2. Astros still the lead. So the offense goes out there and gets you two more runs to give you the three-run lead. By this time, your bullpen comes in, and they blow it. Brooks Raley, you're on the list. You can't you can't do it. He gets in out. Actually, hold on. Hold on. Raley came in the sixth inning. Struck out the hitter. He was done. This is where I'll blame Dusty. So Brooks Raley actually didn't do bad. He got this one out. It was a left-handed hitter to end the inning. That's the way you use Brooks Raley, to get one hitter out. Situational lefty, obviously do it mid-inning when there's already an out or two. But don't let Brooks Raley face right-handed hitters because he, he has no chance against them. And they don't just hit singles, doubles. They hit home runs off Brooks Raley. And I'll talk more about that in a minute here. But Brian Abreu, a guy you want to trust, who obviously didn't put very well in this one outing, I guess, in the Detroit series. He comes in second time. Second time he's given up multiple runs. All of them are earned. So Brooks, uh, Brian Abreu's ERA is up to five. So I'm losing faith by the game in him. Blake Taylor's sort of was the good lefty we had in the bullpen last year, the guy I had more faith in. He's been terrible. He comes in. Uh, he blows the safe. He only gets two outs, but he allows an earned run, which I believe was a home run, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was a home run he gave up. Um, so he wasn't good. Stanick, a guy that I do like, um, he comes in. So he gives up two walks, uh, a run it was earned, and then Presley actually was the one who gave up that run. But the whole bullpen just blew, just just crapped the bed in that game. They gave up. They gave up. So, I guess i try to think of this for a second. So, this is where I had an issue with Dusty. So, Brooks Raley, he used him correctly. He got the final out in the sixth inning. Or Kitty went five and two-thirds, which, you know, actually has been pretty good if you want to talk about our starters and how deep they've gone. Five and two-thirds is more than what a lot of them have done. So, getting into the sixth inning, getting two outs... Obviously ran into a little bit of trouble. But Rayleigh comes in, strikes out the lefty. He was done. That's exactly how I would use Brooks Rayleigh. But I'd hardly use him at all right now. Um, Brian Abreu comes in, I guess, the seventh. He gets two outs but can't get out of that inning. So you bring in Blake Taylor, who gets through that inning. Blake Taylor should have been gone, done, it's over. And we're starting the eighth inning now. And I got Stanek, and I got Presley, and I got a lead. I like it like that, okay? I will deal with that. I that That's an 8-9 combination I think that should be used when you have a one-run one lead. Bringing Blake Taylor out in the eighth inning was a big mistake. Uh, Blake Taylor gave up a home run, which tied the game. 
And then he injured himself. Um, I'm not, you know, obviously Blake Taylor, get well soon. He's on the IL. He's got a severely sprained ankle that he twisted. It looked bad on the replay. There was a chopper up the first baseline. He sort of tried to get to it and sort of flip it to Yuli, but he stepped on his foot wrong and it rolled the ankle and he could barely walk, basically. Had to be carted off. So he got injured pretty badly, but, you know, obviously Paredes is on the IL because he, something arm-related, I believe, haven't heard an update on him. Rayleigh, or not Rayleigh, but Taylor's going to be out a while. So we'll wait on that. Those are two relievers. Uh, they brought up a few guys. Navaldo Rodriguez was one of them. The other guy, something, something Solomon. I'm not sure exactly. But these are... Navaldo Rodriguez has played for the team. Um, hasn't been great, but I guess hasn't been terrible. He's not going to be a high leverage type guy. Uh, he's just there to sort of fill this, uh, fill the open spot. Um, so yeah, Blake Taylor will be without him for a while, but it's not like he was a light in the world on fire. So these bullpen arms we've lost, it's like, I mean, Enoli Paredes had three outings where he couldn't throw strikes. So, okay, maybe an aisle stint's good. I don't never wish harm on anybody, obviously, but... Blake Taylor, in, in, in only pray, you're not losing a lot in losing those arms, okay? But bringing Blake Taylor out in that eighth inning was a huge mistake. Then you bring in Stanek to get out of that inning, but then he brought Stanek out in the ninth, which was also a mistake. So it you can't let these... I, I'm, I'm done with letting star, uh, relievers go. Let them get through the inning and then just move on. Because Stanek finished off that seventh, or eight, sorry, he finished off that eighth inning for Blake Taylor after he got hurt, got through that inning just fine, and then comes out for the ninth, which was a mistake, and you had Presley, and then Presley, Stanek walks two guys, and then Presley comes in. First battery gives up a double, and they walk it off. That's always a tough game to lose. So the bullpen just absolutely just, after that game, I'm like, all right, now you just, if the Astros are going to lose a lot of games with their bullpen, that's not very good. Uh, that's more painful than just losing from the get-go. When you have a lead and you feel like you can win a ball game and the bullpen comes in and absolutely implodes the way they did Friday, after Friday's game, I was just like, you know what? I just expect to lose if they have a one- or two-run lead late in games and you're going to people like Brooks Raley and Blake Taylor and – and Brian Abreu, and I uh, wasn't going to jump ship with Stanek. Obviously, Stanek and Presley are the only two guys in that bullpen I'm okay with, but Stanek wasn't good, and Presley didn't last more. I mean, he, he threw like three pitches, double game over. So, I mean, a closer should come in and, and, and strike people out. So, yeah. So you go into Saturday. This was an interesting game. Let's see if Granke can bounce back. Certainly did. Eight scoreless innings. In fact, I was shocked that Dusty took him out after eight. He only had 91 pitches, and he was mowing him down. The offense scored one run on a Taylor Jones RBI single. But it did work out. Uh, Presley came in for his first, surprisingly, his first save opportunity all year. Now, there was a game in L.A. where he had a chance, but he got the win. You can't get credit credited for the win and the save. He pitched two innings there. But this was like his first actual save opportunity. He did fine, bounced back after the one hitter he gave up a double to that walked it off Friday. So he came in, one, two, three inning, uh, got the job done there, so that was good. Finally just getting a win after losing six straight games. I uh, would have taken a win anyway we could have gotten it, but Zach Greinke was masterful in this game. Uh, good to see. Drops the ERA back to 2.81. He's 2-1 and one on the year. But but Granke was great, and I thought they should have continued and let him give give him a chance to finish off the game. Astros had 10 hits, so they really should have had more than one run because they had runners on base, it seemed like, all night. But I would have taken a win anyway. You can get it one nothing, obviously. So uh, the offense, obviously, is 
an issue at this point, and you have a faulty bullpen, and you have starters that still can't go deep, so a lot of problems. Um, and then today, uh, Odorizzi gets his second start. Um, wasn't very good in his first, but Odorizzi is still trying to get himself sort of ramped up into a season in a regular sort of every fifth day type position. And, you know, he's, you know, I I think Odorizzi will actually end up having a pretty decent year. Uh, he wasn't very good. Uh, he struggled in the first inning because the pitch count ran up into the upper 30s almost. But he only gave up one run, so he limited the damage there. And then he was shut down, innings 2, 3, 4. In fact, he had sat down like 10 straight batters, and he was striking guys out, and he was, looked like he was pitching really effectively. And then the fifth inning came in, uh, struggled. There was sort of a ball in center field that Miles Straw sort of misplayed. Uh, didn't take a great route. He was sort of turned around, um, and it fell. It was ruled a triple, I think. Mitch Hanniger got a triple out of it. It brought in what did it bring in. Let's see here. I got a... Brought in what, yeah, so Hanniger tripled, brought in two runs to give him a 3-2 lead. We scored a run on a ground rule double, the only hit they had today. <laughs> and that actual hit was actually, it fell on the warning track and it bounced over the wall, but it was lost in the sun by the left fielder. So that the only hit the Astros had today was a ground rule double that actually shouldn't have been a hit. Uh, but the Sun actually benefited the Astros because the left fielder couldn't see it. Uh, but they scored a run there to tie it. They scored a second run on... I love to see the second run they scored. It gave them the lead at the time, but Chas McCormick walks, steals second, sack fly gets him to third, and then an RBI sack fly gets him home. Fundamental baseball, you get the runner on, you get him over, you get him in. I loved seeing... That type of baseball, which we never get anymore. I want to see more steals. I want to see more sacrifices. I'm sick of strikeouts and home runs, okay? Uh, so I enjoyed seeing them score that run that way, but obviously they couldn't keep it. Uh, Odorizzi gets pulled after he gives up that triple to Hanniger to score two. And guess who comes in? Yep, Brooks Raley. And what does Raley do? He gives up a home run. And, yeah, he gives up that home run. To tie. It was this is another interesting move by Dusty Baker. You brought so taking Oda Rizzi out when you did, which okay, that's fine. You don't go to Rayleigh if a righty's coming up. You just don't do it. You had two lefties after Ty France. Leave Oda Rizzi in, okay? It's not like he had 90, 100 pitches. He had like 70 or 80. I don't I'm not sure exactly what it was. And I know you're still trying to ramp him up here. You're trying to with each start, pitch count goes up 10 more pitches. This, this, this. I understand all that. But Brooks, that's not the option at, at that point in time. And like I said, Brooks Riley, when he faces right-handed hitters, he doesn't just give up singles. He gives up long balls. So uh, that was not good. Uh, that was a two-run shot he gave up. So two runs scored, obviously. One was credited to um, Oda Rizzi. But Blake Taylor's, or not Blake Taylor, Brooks Riley's just a mess. Skeptical going into the year. He was sort of up and down this this year, uh, last year. That's why I was skeptical going into this year. And he's proven to me he can't pitch. Blake Taylor's out. Uh, he's out for probably a substantial amount of time. But I do not want to see Brooks Raley facing anybody else but a lefty. Another thought on that altogether. Um, why 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 do a lot of managers do this? I've always not been a huge fan of this, but why do we always play the matchups? I feel like every year we have a lefty in the bullpen that's not good. It's been years since we've had a viable left-handed reliever. But you don't – you have a lefty. and I, I don't get it, and the whole three-batter rule makes things a little bit tougher. But I would rather see a right-handed reliever face a lefty if he's the better reliever. Don't bring in a lefty on lefty and act like, well, I had to play the matchup. I'm sick of playing the stupid matchups lefty on lefty. Just get me the better reliever. Bring Stanek out and have him face the lefty because Brooks Raley, it just it bothers me 
And I've seen this multiple games where whether it's Blake Taylor or Brooks Raley, Dusty comes out of the dugout and acts like, well, I, I got to play the matchup here, and I got two of the next three hitters that are lefties, so let's 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 bring in Blake Taylor, let's bring in Brooks Raley. They've both, they've both been terrible. And you, you can't do the one batter. You can't do that anymore. So just bring in the better reliever, screw the matchup, okay? That's something I had to get off my chest because that just bothers me because – with the new rules, you, you can't do what you used to do. So just, and like I said, Brooks Raley doesn't give up hits. He gives up long balls. And um, he, he's on the list. So Kyle Tucker, uh, Brooks Raley, welcome to the list of players I can't stand right now. Blake Taylor would have been put on that list. He's on the IL. I'll go easy on him. Brian Abreu, you better pull yourself together quickly. Joe Smith, golly. Thought we'd be getting a, you know, obviously he opted out of last year with the virus. Coming back this year, he has been just absolutely god-awful in the bullpen. Uh, Joe Smith is on the verge of... I'll also give Chris Gordy and Michael Connor credit for mentioning this on the podcast. Uh, if he doesn't pull himself together and, and start to... I mean, since the Astros got him back in, what was it? I think it was after the World Series year, they got him. 18, 19, 20. He actually pitched in some big playoff games in 19 and pitched pretty well. He's a, He was hurt one year. Obviously, hurt for the majority of one year. I think that was 19, I want to say. Uh, last year, obviously, opted out. This year, he's just been completely just a mess. But Chris Gordy and Michael Connor talked about DFAing him, designate him for assignment if he can't figure things out quickly. And I'm... I'm Right there with him. Uh, but Joe Smith has been just... You were hoping to get a guy that, you know, could, could get through innings and be, a, you know, uh, be just hasn't hasn't been able to do it. He's, he's never going to be a setup man. He's never going to be a closer. But a guy that could, you know, help bridge the gap to your closer can't really do it. He's been terrible. So he came in today and gave up, really put the game out of reach. So Rayleigh screwed up, of course. What's new there? Stanek came in, bounced back, got two strikeouts, got through an inning. And then Joe Smith, his inning of work. Two earned runs. Uh, he walked a guy. ERA is at 14.54. And then Solomon came in. I didn't even see this at this point. At this point, I had given up, really. I was starting to fall asleep. Um, but Peter Solomon's the guy, I guess, that was brought up for um, Blake Taylor's injury. And he pitched a scoreless... I guess ninth, but also walked a hitter. But uh, we'll see. I didn't see that part. So, <laughs> but anyway, so they lose this game. They lose the series that uh, finishes off your one and five week. Um, obviously, I'm at 38 minutes. This will be a longer podcast. So, um, I want to go through sort of the lineup and players that I can add to the list here. But Kyle Tucker and Brooks Raley, you guys are officially on the list. Um, the bullpen again. Um, Brian Abreu's last two outings has not been good. Ryan Stanek has been good. I trust him. Um, Presley obviously will only come in the game if it's tied or there's a save situation, things like that. So hasn't had a lot of outings, but he's ERA still at zero. So. I won't blame him too much. Astros have an off day tomorrow. They'll play two in Colorado. Then they come back home and they play four against. Let's see here. I gotta look at the schedule. Um, they'll come home for four against LA. So, um, day off tomorrow. Uh, it's gonna be very important. So, Lance McCullers is apparently supposed to pitch, but. Uh, it's actually to be determined or to be announced because uh, he's still dealing, I guess, with his sort of, um, I guess he's sick from the vaccine he got. So, um, But again, it's Lance McCullers on the road. So if you had to start Luis Garcia or Brandon Bielak, two guys in the bullpen right now who actually, I would, if I'm dusty, I start turning to them in those situations because I'd rather see them than people like Joe Smith, Brooks Raley, uh, Brian Abreu and whoever else is in that bullpen at this point. 
but you need you need length uh, from your starters. Oda Rizzi, I, I I have faith that he'll he'll be fine. Um, he's shown good stuff. He can strike out hitters. His fastball is 93, 94. He can. I think Oda Rizzi will be just fine. Actually, I think he'll be a. I think down the road he'll he'll really benefit us. Uh, but Fromber, obviously, you know, high high hopes for him this year. Had the finger issue, um, so it'll take him a while to. It's he's still months away. We probably won't see Blake Taylor for a while. I don't have an update on 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 Inoli Paredes. And with your five guys that I mentioned on the IL earlier, that's just a wait and see at this point. But Abraham Toro is just got off at the plate. He can't hit major league pitching. It's really that simple. Taylor Jones still waiting. Alex Degotti is another guy they brought up. Degotti, Degotti. I don't necessarily how to pronounce that last name, but another guy they brought up who uh, we're still waiting, I guess. Chaz McCormick will get more opportunities, obviously. Um, Brantley's really not done a great job since. I mean, he got off to the amazing start, but got hit in the wrist. You know, the third game into the year was out for, you know, three, four, five days, came back, but hasn't really done a whole lot since. I mean, the the offense that got off to the amazing, amazing start, you know, this year, uh, since, I mean, they, this Detroit series, they score two runs, two runs, four runs, they score five runs, one run, two runs. The offense, I mean, the four and five is okay. Both of those resulted in losses, though, because the bullpen blew it. Well, the bullpen blew Friday's game, and they blew today's game. But, yeah, there, there's a lot of things that aren't making me happy right now. Kyle Tucker's one of those guys that uh, he's really pressing right now. And, you know, he had a good good season last year, but the swing, I'll never get over that swing. It worked last year, so I sort of just was like, all right, you know what, do do what you got to do, Kyle Tucker, and it worked out. But when he struggles, uh, I'm just going to go back to the swing. It's it's too long. It's got a big loop in it. I think at some point during his career, he's going to have to figure out a way to shorten that swing. He also swings at pitches that are really high. If I'm a pitcher... Uh, like Robinson Chirinos, that high fastball he can never hit, which I mentioned on this podcast, uh, you know, last year, time and time again. Uh, Kyle Tucker, just throw high fastballs because he'll swing at them all day, and he'll make very weak contact if he makes a contact at all. But Kyle Tucker is, yeah, he's not good right now. Um, obviously no Altuve. Miles Stroll, I want him to work out so much, but... It's not working. I mean, he's hitting 220. No home runs. He's got like four RBIs. He's trying real hard, so I do give him credit. I know that he is working hard, but he's he's almost an automatic out most days at the plate. So um, you really don't have options unless you go Chaz McCormick. I mean, you want straw because of the speed, but he can't steal first base, so... Uh, I don't know with Miles Straw, and also he has sort of had that. It wasn't an easy play out in the outfield, but I know if the Astros still had George Springer, he would have made that that play in center field. So, um, yeah, it's it's been tough with Miles Straw. Diaz, I like Diaz as a alternate, like a, a guy that can give people days off, or if you have an injury, I do like Diaz being very versatile, can play anywhere in the infield if you need him in the outfield. He's I, I do like Diaz overall, um, but at third base right now, it's sort of a revolving door. I um, mean, you got Toro over there. They've had Diaz over there. Um, I'd rather see Diaz, obviously, than Toro because Abraham Toro is just a complete – he can't hit major league pitching. It's that simple. Carlos Correa, dude, you are not worth 200 or even 300 million. Like, you, you have done nothing this year. Nothing. All right? I guess he hit a few home runs or whatever, but a time where you need to step up because you have all these people that have never played or aren't major league baseball players, like this is the time to step up. 
and you know you're you're not doing it. You're 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 terrible. I mean, come on, dude. Like, <laughs> so if yeah, Carlos Correa, he's close. If he doesn't pick things up this week, and we don't get our players back. He's going to find himself on the list as well. He's on the cusp of the list. Carlos Correa, pick things up. Be a leader. All right? Um, so there's that. Um, obviously, Yuli has been hitting well, so he's been doing pretty good. Uh, fell off a little bit these last two games. Struck out twice today. Um, so not, not, not great, but he's been pretty good so far this year. Um, obviously Martin Maldonado, uh, he was on, he's on the IL with that. So, um, Jason Castro's got three hits this year, two home runs. He's not doing much of anything. Uh, you'll get lucky if he can pop a home run for you here and there, but he's the same hitter he was when he was here for all those years, which isn't, isn't very good. Uh, Taylor Jones will get some, some action here. He's been, uh, you know, Taylor Jones was the guy last year that I jumped on very quickly in the first series because he really pissed me off. But um, I'm okay with Taylor Jones, I guess. But, again, you can't expect a whole lot. Same thing with Ronnie Dawson. Can't expect a whole lot. Uh, but, but like, the veterans, like, Michael Brantley and Carlos Correa need to pull themselves together and really carry this team offensively. Because And, and Kyle Tucker, y- yeah. I mean, I'm gonna throw Joe uh, Joe Smith on that list as well. So Joe Smith, uh, Brooks Raley, and Kyle Tucker are all on the can't stand player list right now. And there's a lot of people that are really close as well. But the Astros at seven and eight. So you know, quick standings update. Oakland turned things around very quickly. They they're better than the Astros. They've won eight eight games in a row. So there, here's Oakland, exactly like you'd expect them. Seattle actually is winning the division at ten and six. LA at eight and five. Oakland at nine and seven. Houston at seven and eight. Texas at seven and nine. Only fifteen games, but the Astros got to find a way to grind out some wins, get their guys back. We talked early in the year about how important staying healthy is, and you got five guys, three of which are big hitters in the lineup that are out. So. Things are really hard to come by right now, and it's hard to watch our bullpen try to keep leads late in games. Uh, but Dusty made some questionable decisions bullpen-wise, lineup-wise. Um, it's hard to, to blame Dusty because he's not working with a whole lot at this point. That's something I talked about with Bill Porter. Bill Porter, who didn't have a lot to work with. Um, but, yeah, your decisions are magnified when they don't work out. So, you know, but, I mean, yeah, things aren't good right now. Day off tomorrow. And then they play 13 straight games. So, Tuesday, whether McCullough starts or not, it's time for your, uh, you know, your all, all starters have gotten at least three starts. Um, Oda Rizzi's gotten two. But it's time to let these guys, it's it's time to let them sink or swim out there. Uh, ramp them up, give them at least 90 to 100 pitches and just see what you got. But it's even more apparent for our relievers to go deeper now because the deeper you can go is one less inning. I, 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 I get to see the horrendous bullpen that we have right now. So that's another reason why it's important to go deep. And obviously, after tomorrow, you have 13 straight uh, games without an off day. So, yeah. Yeah. But they they got six games next week. I'm not even going to give you a prediction because I'm just not going to do it. Um, yeah. Uh, that's all I got for you. I'm almost at 50 minutes, so I definitely uh, did some things this week, uh, but... Had sort of a lot to talk about. I, I could go on and on. Um, but, yeah. So, I'll sort of wrap things up there. Obviously, um, tough week. Uh, the Astros are 7-8. and eight, So, we'll try to 
you know, have a good day off and, and, and get back to it out on Tuesday. And hopefully we can start scoring runs, get some guys back, find some more people other than standing and pressing that bullpen to be productive. And, yeah, we'll go from there. But, again, I'll talk to you next Sunday, um, hopefully with better things to talk about. So, But, yeah, 50 minutes. So I'll wrap things up there, and we'll see you next week.